Hi, from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2016. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Cisco, IBM, NVIDIA, and our ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Peter Burris. We're back. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Really excited to have your own Haviv here. He is the founder and CTO of Iguazio, a company you may not know. We know because we've been talking a lot on, <laughs> on social, some of the smartest people crowd chat. On, on the planet, right? Participated in our crowd chat. A lot of great perspectives. You're on, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for Thanks, coming Dave. on. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. So we're excited for you. You guys announced, basically announced the coming out party yesterday, right here. Yes, uh, we, we've Cube. been uh, here in theCUBE before, but more sort of doing architecture launch, describing right. a little sort of our, uh, our concept is pretty revolutionary, so we said we'll do it in two phases, but uh, yeah. That's, uh, and we got the car. <coughs> oh, uh, yes. this is, you're showing this at your booth. So, Tell us the story. What's going on this week? You announced the, you know, sure. your, your products, and you've got so. The... Uh, so what is Iguazio? We have a bunch of uh, great guys, you know, founders of Extreme IO, guys from XIV, guys from sort of uh, different uh, units that understand the entire stack, and everywhere from sort of the lowest layer of how flash works and disks and networks, all the way up to applications. And we, we basically decided that the existing stack doesn't work for uh, new workloads, for analytics, for big data, and for. Uh, you know, the transition that we're going to talk about in a minute. And we sort of re-architect the entire stack. And this re-architecture that allowed us to basically produce 100x better performance and things that most uh, customers think are unbelievable. You know, our, our database uh, level performance are like a few million ops per second on a given server, when traditionally if you look at like Amazon or even, you know, Cassandra and some of the open source, it will be in the tens of thousands. So it does sound imaginary. And at the same time, we did build it extremely dense in a way that it allows us to actually lower the cost. So our solution is 100 times faster and 10x lower uh, than most of the traditional solutions because we basically broke the entire stack and meshed it up together. That's uh, general and, idea. And you've written, you write some great blogs, <coughs> and uh, I guess that's the kind of thing you got to do when you're starting the company, right? <laughs> Help get the word out. But one of them really talked about the challenges that, that uh, customers have with Amazon with all the different components and the services and the, and the variety of APIs that they have to deal with. You're trying to solve that problem, are you not? Yeah, so basically we, we have three uh, major innovations. One is sort of this extreme efficiency and performance. The other one is uh, we have what we call a multi-model data-based data model. That means that we can basically uh, build any type of data on top of our platform, whether it's files or streams or objects. Uh, you can actually ingest the data as a streaming element and read it as a table or scan it using an analytics primitives. And that requires a complete re-architecture of how the engine works. It, it is leveraging the modern architectures because many of the existing databases were basically formed around hard drive limitations, which are very sequential by nature. So you want to avoid uh, indirections and things like that. And, and by having uh, more flash, more memory, that means you can do more indirections, especially if you have all the things that we have in our stack for prediction and, and all that of I.O. And then you could actually uh, meet, uh, create those multi-model uh, elements. Now having a database and running a file system on top of it buys you additional things. Like for example, you can run SQL statements to look for files. You know, give me all the files belonging to Joe from the last week. Uh, and we think that with this uh, enormous growth of uh, data in the different uh, disciplines, you know, IoT, big data, uh, analytics, and uh, software as a service, uh, you need those capabilities to handle data. So basically we have one platform uh, that stores all kinds of data at much faster speeds than anyone else. And that also allows you to create different pipelines because instead of uh, taking data, streaming it in, and then taking another package that basically migra migrates it into another form, and then taking that thing and turning it into analytics, uh, we actually uh, took some Amazon blog posts of saying, this is how you would build the stuff. And we showed that instead of uh, six different elements that you pay, the, the most expensive uh, element in Amazon actually is the TPS, not the capacity. Uh, so you actually pay six times for every transaction in the Amazon case. So beyond the 100x is actually even cheaper because you have one platform. It also simplifies the application perspective because instead of just producing sort of uh, low-level low APIs, uh, we went the Amazon way and to do all the sort of restful APIs, which uh, we love them. That's why we sort of have those cars and all that in the show. We show that an Android client or an Angular app can just talk to our system. It doesn't need any mediation. Uh, one of the things we did, we basically have a layer seven firewall 
within the, the data pipeline, an extremely fast one. So every transaction that goes into the, the system is classified. So now I can say things that come from cards are not allowed to touch this data. Things that come from Android apps are not allowed to, to update this data. And, and this is a, a totally new paradigm. I don't need API services. I don't need all this glue logic to ingest data. And the minute I, I generate an event, immediately I see that in an analytic uh, dashboard. Another great thing we did is we took this notion of platform as a service. I think uh, more and more people don't want to manage servers, they don't want to manage disks, they want to manage apps and data. And this is sort of uh, what we've uh, innovated around there is basically focusing on data management and not on infrastructure management. So you've done some very, very interesting things with the technology that allows you to do that. So yep. by compacting, reducing the size of the data, uh, you're able to reduce the amount of data that has to be moved, but at the same time you can actually process it, you can act on it, you yes. can do things with it. So talk a little bit about some of the special sauce that you've developed that makes mm -hmm. it possible to do all these things. Yeah, so first, uh, Dave knows that from our uh, chats in, in Twitter, I'm sort of not a fan of traditional storage, like block storage, because uh, think what, what they do, they take a 4K size uh, block and then they compress and they dupe it and do all those things. And if I need to search the data, I have to decompress this 4K byte and then start figuring out where, where things are at, okay? And uh, instead, I'd rather do that at the database level. I'd rather encode the data instead of just compressing it. If I see a, a string saying username, I basically compact it to a number saying seven, and then I search, uh, look for seven. I don't need to look for an entire string. I basically, I put a lot less data into the memory. I waste a lot less uh, bandwidth on I.O. and all that, and I do more efficient things. Uh, you also tier the data, not sort of basically throw everything into the block. Uh, you need to treat indexes differently, you need to treat metadata differently and blobs differently, and that means that your data is scattered across different technologies to maximize the value. Now, if you're using traditional disk technology and you have all this versioning and snapshots and all that, it doesn't hold water because your data is actually scattered across five different types of storage for the same transaction. You cannot gain, uh, gain consistency. And some of those ideas, sort of, uh, we haven't invented them. We took ideas that, you know, from, uh, from my work with hyperscale customers, and we just evolved them. Because I think uh, us coming from low-level uh, infrastructure understanding, uh, we took the same concept that Google and Amazon have and just uh, deployed them on a much uh, higher performance uh, architecture on the software. So what, when somebody buys a Guazio, what are they buying? What are they getting? So basically, we're a platform as a service. It's not an individual uh, software component. It deployed in two forms. One is you can buy basically an appliance, you know, fully integrated, sort of the Nutanix uh, model. We do like a bunch of things in Nutanix. And uh, another one is uh, we'll sell you the software on a reference architecture. Uh, our reference architecture is very sort of high-end configuration. Every one of our appliances is about 400 gig ports and 24 NVMe devices. Uh, each one of those can displace about 60 servers on Cassandra or something, something like that. So we, basically what we did is a very high density uh, approach. Every server connects about 300 disks uh, compared to a dupe approach of 12 drives per, uh, per server. Uh, that is really the secret sauce that allows us to, on one end, increase the performance, but on the same time, lower the cost uh, to serve the archiving storage kind of uh, cost levels. So, uh, so the idea is, if you're, uh, for example, uh, we're only working right now with tier one customers versus we're still beta level, so we, we like the more lucrative uh, uh, customers. So these are uh, banks, uh, cloud service providers, even Amazon, large Amazon customers, you know, software as a service uh, companies. Uh, one of them is sort of an Uber-like uh, use case. And they took our stuff and they use uh, Amazon Redshift. Uh, they took our stuff with Spark and they got about 10x uh, better performance at way lower cost. And that's Relative uh, to Amazon Redshift. Uh, compared to Amazon Redshift. Amazon Redshift is about a dollar per gig uh, per month uh, versus S3, which is only three cents. So everyone likes to quote the, the three cents, but they forget that when you buy Dynamo or Redshift or uh, the more sophisticated services, it's way more expensive. Uh, so we sort of give them a price model of, uh, of something which is way cheaper. We produced uh, 10x better performance on the application level, and they can now also own the storage. Uh, one of the challenges many organizations have, they're afraid of moving their data into uh, the cloud, uh, whether it's because of uh, governance uh, issues, whether it's because they just want to have the freedom to move between one, one provider and another. And uh, we have very close partnership 
uh, with Equinix, they were also quoted in our uh, press and some joint customers. Uh, basically, we put those racks in Equinix in sort of a hub connected directly to Amazon and other service providers. And you can actually do burst computing. You can actually run VMs in Amazon and analytics on our platform. And we have a sort of dark fiber into those places. So now it cuts the cost even further because the cheapest thing in Amazon is uh, spot instances, you know, just VMs without any disks. And, um, and especially uh, if you have uh, people that need to, to run VMs, one of the things we see in R&D, if I keep the VMs, you know, sometimes I ask for my VMs because I'm also sort of a geek and like to code. And uh, they, they tell me 100 bucks a day because I have to keep the VM, but I'm not really using it. You know, I need to write blogs and, and do other <laughs> things. Uh, build cars. <laughs> yeah, build cars. <laughs> uh, so, so really what you want to do is when you turn off the VM, you want it to sort of disappear. You only want to pay a dollar for the time you were using it. So you want to decouple the storage from the computation and just launch. And the essential thing is, in or is basically you know, having the separation that the VM doesn't hold any state which is this sort of cloud-native architecture. So your licensing model is a subscription? or, or It's an it annual subscription sort of model and determined by two sort of main factor of performance and capacity. And, when, whether I, and that's the same if I buy an appliance? Yes, or, basically uh, when you buy an appliance, we give you the hardware at cost, okay. plus sort of uh, you know, uh, movement fees and that sort of thing. But uh, what we want to make it very transparent to users, we're not after being sort of an EMC model, you know, 60, 70 points margins across hardware. We're, we're basically a software company, uh, but what we see is that uh, customers like this notion of an integrated turnkey solution. So we say, okay, we'll give you this integrated turnkey, but you know, uh, we'll charge you for the software. Uh, in part, we're working with all, of, you know, the old uh, regular suspects on sort of the OEM side, and potentially uh, have others resell a configuration with our software as and, well. And they would buy perhaps the software of the <coughs> reference architecture, or an SDK, or. Yeah, and so we have a lot of experience with it uh, in the past, both in uh, Voltaire and Menox, where I was. We were always in sort of an OEM model with most of the, you know, Sun, Oracle, uh, IBM, HP, et cetera, uh, where we, w we were doing the sort of the customer sales, but the fulfillment was always an um, OEM model. So we're quite accustomed to this uh, kind of model. We're still early stage, so we're working directly with customers. Uh, but long run, it's sort of a partnership uh, game. And, uh, so. What's your take on, um, I mean, you saw our service and report, you see, you see the, some of the work that we do. What's your take on hyper-converged infrastructure? And uh, you said you mentioned Nutanix before as a, as a model that yeah, I, I you think admire. Yeah, uh, I think they're a great company, uh, so I don't, I don't have any uh, reason to bash them as a company. I think in general the HCI model is not a, a long-term sustainable model because what uh, the cloud guys, you know, basically what you see in the enterprise side, and I don't, it's not just Nutanix, it's all this sort of uh, ACI movement, et cetera. Uh, they're basically trying to create an Amazon EC2. That's something Amazon did five years ago, okay? And if you are going up to the cloud and looking, wh where is, uh, you know, Azure investing their money and where is uh, Amazon investing their money, where is Google investing their money, is definitely not there is providing platform as a service, you know, buying AI companies, you know, building uh, services for doing querying and analytics and, and all that, because customers don't want to manage virtual machines. I sort of joke, go joking in one of the tweets, it's sort of the white generation, you know. They want things to work. They, they don't really want to do what we used to do, you know, bring up VMs. They want the cake, not the bake. <coughs> yes. <laughs> and and, um, and for if you're looking at segmentation of the market, you're, you're going to have companies with like 100 folks, okay? They don't need any infrastructure. They need Office 365. They need the RP in the cloud. They, they need apps. They don't need any infrastructure. And if you're looking into bigger organizations, uh, where, where you're going to see the big movement, and it's not going to change overnight, you know, people are still using mainframes, uh, is, is basically the move to um, data in the center, uh, I call it. Basically, uh, the organization will try and centralize more and more data, create governance around it, and the uh, compute is going to be the floating point. Uh, whether it's going to be mobile devices of uh, the workers, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, the website that may be even hosted somewhere, uh, so it, it's going to change the paradigm. And in this environment, HCI is not a, a, um, the right play. So HCI is the right play for the existing architecture of people that don't like uh, SANS and don't like fiber channel and all that stuff and still play with LUNs and VMware and Oracles. Uh, but if someone is building a cloud-native uh, architecture or a data-centric architecture, they're either going to go to a cloud or they're going to create a cloud-like experience for the 
the enterprise. So again, it's not going to go away, but uh, what I had my comments on your, on your report, it was sort of so biased towards uh, the entire world is going to be sort of HCI. I've, and I see that from our discussions with the CSOs and CIOs and, and all that. That's not where they want to take the company. They want to move to pass. Mm. And, and uh, I think there is sort of, if you look at sort of the CIO and uh, IT folks, there is some tension right now because uh, sort of uh, IT, what they know is VMware and SAN and worldwide names and all that stuff. Uh, okay, and they're sort of having a hard time evolving into this sort of service model. Some of them are evolving, and they actually own the relation with Amazon, for example. So they're no longer the guys that making the thing work. They're also the brokers with the, for the service. Right. Uh, but what you would see is that if they want to evolve fast enough, the business units, the guys that serve are the shadow IT, that are basically taking up the wallop and doing the development in Amazon because it's sort of too, too difficult to do it uh, on-prem. Uh, they'll either go to Amazon or say, we want the Amazon-like experience on-prem. Uh, so I think this movement will be faster than what you guys are uh, anticipating. Uh, and that's a reasonable, look, we, we've had a fair amount of debates inside mm -hmm. about what's, wh what's going to be the local, the, the focal point or the loci <coughs> of, of where the value proposition mm -hmm. is. Is it going to be IAS? Is it going to be PASS? Is one going to supersede? I have my way of thinking, but th these are good. This is great feedback. One, one question before we go, if I can. Yeah, we got. Uh, we're out of time, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, it was quick. <laughs> then, then yeah. this, next time you're on the cube, let's talk about whether or not developers, how much developers need to know about the platform and how yeah. better performance. Yeah, makes we're trying it to make it developers. totally transparent, and uh, we actually have. I have in a couple of hours a meetup in Docker. Uh, in New York, and we're going to talk about serve serverless and API-driven uh, uh, computing, complete cloud native. We're actually going to show some demos, uh, but basically, we're going after the big mega mega trends. Okay, of IoT, which is very data-driven, uh, cloud native apps and SaaS uh, providers, also a lot of very uh, developer-driven, state stateless, and all that. And the, the third one is sort of the the big data uh, camp with sort of next generation kind of data warehousing and analytics. So these are the three things that we as a, as a company go after. I think those are sort of the biggest mega trends. That's why it's a lot of fun. So last point, tell us about the name and of course the logo. We're, tell <coughs> people where that came from. Uh, so the name is, uh, there is uh, Iguazu Falls in uh, Brazil and Argentina Junction, which is sort of, I think, the, the prettiest uh, waterfalls in the world and also very massive. So uh, what we wanted to, to convey is the, the message that, uh, you know, storage used to be really static and now it's sort of uh, huge volumes that sort of flow in, uh, immensely uh, coming from many different sources. If you know that, they have about uh, 100 different rapids. And so that's sort of the source of the name. Excellent. All right, we got the content flowing wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall coverage here at Good. Big Data NYC. Like. Yes, yeah, <laughs> furrier-like. Thank you. <laughs> I think. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. This is the Cube. We're live from New York City. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.